Hey friends, my name is Hoax2 and I made the custom sigils mod, which is really just a texture replacement kit for the shields and cloaks in Skyrim. Now I don't have any uh, background in game development or you know texture artistry or anything like that. Everything I'm showing you today is really just what I've learnt by research and trial and error. But I thought by putting together a video it'll help people out. And what I'm going to go over is the high level kind of how textures work in general in Skyrim and hopefully it'll give you a, an understanding of what's going on in custom sigils but also how you might replace textures in other mods or other uh, objects in the game. So it's really just general 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 understanding of what's going on. Okay so to start with from a high level is Skyrim the game. This is the engine, this is the part that we as a user see and probably the part that's most important to you know everyone out there but what's layered on top of that is a whole bunch of things so to start with most mods are ESP files these are the files that Skyrim has added to it and they're layered on top of it to make changes to the original game in the case of custom sigils it has one object in it or multiple depending on which version you've got installed it's the shield the object is inside an ESP file which is added on top of Skyrim the shield itself is actually made up of a few things. It's made up of a model, the textures, and other stuff. Things like uh, animations, sound effects, details, and statistics on the health and damage of it, you know, what it does. Um, typically in Skyrim, the vanilla items are in what are called BSA files. The BSA files are kind of like zip files for Skyrim. The engine understands how to read these and it can open them up and get the pieces of the, the files that it needs. If you want to edit these yourself, you're going to need some sort of unpacker. They're out there, they're easy to find, you just need to be able to find something that can open and extract BSAs. But I'm not going to go into that because Custom Sigils doesn't use it. What I've done is just provided textures for you. So textures in modern games are actually made up of a few different files. What we're looking at are the displacement maps, the normal maps, and specular maps. There's actually a few more, but in this case we're going we're to keep it pretty simple. Uh, and specifically Skyrim doesn't tend to use much more than that. The displacement map is really just the painted on effect. This is what colours and textures and... Well, I shouldn't really use the word textures. This is the imagery that is placed on your model. Uh, it gives the general appearance of the object. Next is the normal map. What this represents is uh, really how lighting is going to affect the model. Rather than having to model all the little tiny cracks and grooves in the object, we can have a flat object and then the lighting can react to the normal map. Lastly is the specular map. This is a black and white representation of what's shiny and what's not. White is reflective and black is matte. So in the case of the shield you'll see that the outside edge here is white and the wood part is black so it's matte colored. Um, I've actually just quickly whipped up this uh, specular map for the shield because I couldn't find one in the game but you get the general idea that white is shiny and black is not. In terms of Skyrim modding and Skyrim itself most people refer to the normal maps with a suffix of underscore n for normal and the specular map of underscore s for specular obviously. This just makes it easier to find when you've got folders full of DDS files. So in the case of this particular shield in Skyrim, it's actually a blank shield which uses a second DDS file or a second displacement map texture to uh, add like what you might refer to as a sticker so the sticker is placed on top of this wood texture, which makes it a really good way to get into making textures for Skyrim because you can edit this without affecting the general look of the shield. This is what we're going to be editing in custom sigils. So this diffuse map is actually made up of the picture itself and an alpha channel. So the picture itself is RGB, red, green, blue. These are the colors that are mixed to make this picture. And then alpha. Alpha is 
transparent. So anything that's white we can see and anything that's black we can't see. So that's what stops this black box from appearing on the rest of your artwork. I've had a few questions in the past about people saying, hey, I've got this box around my shield. It's either because you've lost this alpha or you haven't saved it as a DDF that support DDS that supports alpha. So you want to make sure that whatever graphic editing you're using, you don't lose this alpha channel. This is kind of saved over the top of this. So to show you what that looks like in Photoshop, you can see here we've got the red, green, blue, and when they're combined, we get a colored picture. So that's like mixing colors in, in uh, primary school. I don't know what you guys call it in the States, grade school or something like that. Um, these make up the picture. Then on top of that, we've got what's called the alpha channel. This is the transparency. You can see here when I apply it here, Photoshop does it in red so we can see it, but it's the transparent and not transparent parts of the image. So that's it in black and white. That's it combined with the image. Without flogging a dead horse, it's really important that you make sure that the image editing software you are using supports this alpha channel. Um, I'm pretty sure Microsoft Paint doesn't. Uh, I know Photoshop does. I think uh, GIMP does, and I'm pretty sure PaintShop Pro does as well. So just double check that this exists. Uh, you don't want to lose that data because it's what stops that black box from appearing on your object. It gives it the transparency it needs. Uh, if your image editing software does support this and you're getting the black box, triple check that you're exporting your DDS as a file that supports alpha, because otherwise it just forgets that this channel even exists and just goes with the, the RGB. So I guess one of the benefits of custom sigils or what I was trying to do is get rid of all of this so you don't have to worry about how any of that works and only focus on the DDS file of your particular texture. And in fact, you probably don't even need to worry about the alpha provided that you are paying attention to it. So you'll see that uh, in this case, Skyrim for some reason has rotated that artwork around. So you'll probably be making your artwork up the correct way before you export it. You're going to want to turn it uh, 90 degrees to the right. And then that way it'll be up the correct way in the game. I've got no idea why it's like that. There's probably a person out there somewhere in Bethesda who, who gets it, but that's just how it is. So what you're going to be doing is using whatever image editing software you want to create this DDS file. So this could be Photoshop, it could be GIMP, it could be uh, PaintShop Pro. But what you're going to need is a DDS plugin or a DDS converter because normally these image editing software don't make DDSs. They don't do it by default. They save JPEGs and bitmaps and all of that sort of thing, but they don't save DDS files. So you, I've got a few links where you can go and find DDS plugins for GIMP and Photoshop. Or someone in my comments left a message saying that they found a DDS converter so you can convert something to DDS. Be careful using this because you want to make sure, again, that you don't lose that alpha channel. So this, uh, you'll have to triple check that this actually does what you want it to. But really what we're going to be doing is then creating our DDS, which I've kind of made a mistake here. It, your DDS incorporates that alpha, you don't want to forget about that. But by using your image editing software, you make your DDS file, you replace the DDS file in the custom sigils folders, and that's it. This image is then read by the rest of this process all the way up to your game. So hopefully that helps people kind of understand generally what's going on here um, and if they were to say for example want to make I don't know if you wanted to make someone have a glittery skin in Skyrim what you've got to do is go into the BSA find the specular map and then add all your like glittery dots to it for example and then replace your thing. So this this is just a general overview of how textures work and hopefully it helps more people in the future uh, do some texture replacements.